What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to show you how to build a low cost, small form factor Oculink eGPU dock using parts from Amazon. This is going to make it really easy to connect an external GPU to your laptop, mini PC, and a held gaming device, and you can use an M.2 slot if you need to, but there are quite a few devices releasing recently that do have an Oculink port built right in. Lenovo is even jumping on the bandwagon. Over in Asia, they recently released their Oculink eGPU and laptop with an external Oculink port. One of my favorite mini PCs right now that comes with an Oculink port right up front is the Morphine Gem 10. Their Gem 12 also has an Oculink port. And if you're not familiar with Oculink, basically this brings PCIe outside of the case. Usually when we're talking about eGPUs, we're talking about Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or even USB 4, but that only runs at PCIe 3.0 up to 40 gigs. With Oculink, we can run at PCIe 4.0 up to 63 gigs, giving us a much faster connection, and in my experience, it's a lot more stable. Now with this build, I wanted to keep it nice and small, but you can go with the larger GPU if you want to, like an RTX 3050, 3060, or even an RTX 4060. I'm going to be going with a low-profile RTX 4060 from Gigabyte, We've got eight gigs of GDDR6 here, and yeah, this is a great performer all by itself, but again, I wanted to keep this dock relatively small, and I also wanted to keep the GPU power under 150 watts. That's one of the main reasons I'm going with this unit here. So the most important thing here for an Oculink dock is your Oculink board. What we've got here is a relatively cheap board that you can pick up on Amazon for about $40, also comes with a cable and an adapter. We've got a PCIe X16 slot here, our Oculink connector, and a 24-pin ATX power connector. So you could use a regular PC power supply with this. And most of these come with an M.2 to Oculink adapter. So if your device doesn't natively support Oculink, you can always add it from a free M.2 slot. But yeah, this is the main thing we need to worry about here. Our GPU is going to plug into this. We'll also plug power into this board. So the next thing we need to worry about here is getting power to the board itself. And there's several ways to go about this. One of the main things to do that would get you out cheap is using something like a flex power supply or even just an ATX power supply. Remember, it's just a 24 pin connector on the side of this thing. I've got a 500 watt here. It would work and I could definitely add a much more powerful GPU. But again, I wanted to keep this thing nice and small. So I'm going with a Pico power supply. This is a 150 watt Pico power supply. It runs on 12 volts. So you will need some type of 12 volt adapter to get this up and running. But even with an external power supply for the Pico, it will be much smaller than adding something like an ATX PSU to your whole setup. I've used a lot of these in the past, building small form factor PCs based on APUs. And one of the main power supplies I go to is this 120 watt 12 volt power supply that I got on Amazon. Links for everything will be listed down below. So we're kind of going to be limited here up to 120 watts, but luckily that's about what this RTX 4060 is going to pull. And speaking of the card we're going to be using here, even though it's a low profile, it still needs an 8-pin PCIe connector. But unfortunately, a lot of the cheaper Pico PSUs don't come with one, but you can always get an adapter. So all of these Pico power supplies do come with an 8-pin CPU power connector. So this is what would plug directly into your motherboard's CPU power right here, splits into two fours, but we can actually branch this off with an adapter and go straight to an 8-pin PCIe connector. This one splits it off into two 8-pin connectors, but I'm only going to utilize one of them because that's all we need for that RTX 4060. And we'll still have some extra cabling here that is unnecessary for this Oculink eGPU. This is something that can be removed. You could go ahead and re-solder everything, make it really nice and neat or you can leave it just like this and kind of zip tie it. You're not gonna be using it. It could get in the way, but you know, if you don't wanna do any cutting or soldering, you don't need to at all. So let's go ahead and get this together. So we've got the 24 pin connector right here. That's where our Pico power supply is gonna plug into. And you can always do it just like this, or you could pick up a 90 degree adapter. In my opinion, it just cleans everything up. That's what I've done. They're really cheap. I mean like four bucks. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. Now we can plug the Pico power supply directly into that. That way it just keeps it up. It's gonna actually hide it all behind the GPU once the GPU is installed. And if you're going with a larger power supply, like an ATX power supply, all you really need to do is plug that 24 pin in right on the side of that Oculink adapter. Next thing we're gonna do here is wire up that Pico power supply. And uh, these only have two connectors on them. We've got our power, which is gonna go right into the two pin. This is where we're gonna plug in our 12 volt power supply to power that Pico. It's a little 5.5 barrel jack. Now we'll just deal with the rest of the wiring here. 
And these Pico power supplies do come included with like a SATA adapter. We've also got a Molex and that 8 pin CPU power output. It splits off into two 4 pins. But remember, we got that adapter that's going to take it from that 8 pin CPU over to an 8 pin PCIe connector. So really, all we're going to be dealing with here is one of these 8 pins to the GPU. We only need one 8 pin for that RTX 4060. And of course, the power input for the Pico power supply. If you want to go ahead and clean this up, you definitely could. If you don't want to do any cutting or soldering, you can just zip tie everything up and make it look nice and neat. Personally, I'm going to remove all of the unnecessary connectors. But uh, the next thing we need to do here is just plug our GPU in. And even though we've got that Pico power supply facing upwards in the rear, all GPUs will clear this. It's just going to go right into that X16 slot. Now we'll add some power over here to the RTX 4060. And once that's done, we could actually go ahead and power this up if we wanted to. But I would recommend kind of zip tying everything up, making it look nice and neat. Like I mentioned, I'm going to remove the Molex and everything like that. I personally won't be using it with this Pico power supply. So I'll just go ahead and get rid of it. And since we're not building an enclosure for this, another thing that I add to these is just some rubber feet. You can pick up a pack of 100 of these for super cheap on Amazon. It's just going to allow it not to slide around on the desk. I've got four of them just going on each corner here. And once it's all said and done, it looks a little something like this. So I tried to clean it up as best as I could here without a nice enclosure. And you could always build an enclosure if you want to. But this is still relatively small form factor, given that we use that Pico power supply. It's going to send plenty to that RTX 4060, and it's super easy to get this set up. I've got the mini PC I'm going to be using here that has Oculink up front. We've got our Oculink cable plugged into the dock, power going to that Pico power supply, and of course HDMI from our GPU to our external monitor. I'll plug the other end of the Oculink right into the mini PC. We've got a little switch on this board, which will allow us to power the GPU on. And now we can just turn the PC on and we're going to be running with that RTX 4060. Let's give it a second. Everything should be initializing now and it'll boot directly into Windows. So I really do like this little mini PC. It's powered by a Ryzen 7 7840HS. So we've got a lot of power there. Eight cores, 16 threads. And now instead of using the built-in iGPU, We've got a pretty powerful, low profile, small form factor external GPU. So far, everything's been working out really well with this Oculink GPU. As you can see, we've got that Ryzen 7 7840HS, 32 gigs of RAM here. We've still got access to the Radeon 780M for smaller tasks, but what we're going to be focusing on here when it comes to gaming is the NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060. Taking a quick look here with GPU-Z, you can see that this is PCIe X8 4.0, and it is running at 4.0 speeds. I'm getting some really good clocks here, and we can see exactly what this thing's going to do. Now, with that 120-watt power supply, we're getting really close to the limit, but running Furmark here will allow us to kind of stress this thing out. I can show you right here, total power up to around 118 watts. So we're maxing this out at 100% right now. And performance is excellent. I've been running a lot of stuff at 1440p with a little bit of DLSS and even some frame generation. With these 4000 cards, that's one of my favorite things that they've added to them. And it does help out, especially with the lower powered RTX 4060. Before we jump into some game testing, I just wanted to give you a look at a couple benchmarks that I ran on the iGPU and the external Oculink 4060. When it comes to Fire Strike on that 780M iGPU, we got a total score of 7,861. But on the do it yourself Oculink RTX 4060, we jumped up to 25,702. So we've got a nice little bump there. And the next one here is just 3D Mark Time Spy on the 780M 3,363. But with the Oculink 4060, we jumped up to 10,624. So this definitely upped the GPU performance across the board. Now it's time to check out what this thing can really do with AAA games. First up, we've got Horizon Forbidden West, where at 1440p, medium settings, frame gen on. Now I did try this right out of the gate at ultra 1440p with DLSS set to performance, and we were only getting an average of around 40 FPS. This game is just hard to run and frame gen really helps out as you can see. But of course, I still had to drop those settings down to medium. 
Either way, if we tried this on the iGPU, we'd have to go down to 720p with FSR set to ultra performance to even average 50 FPS. So this is really nice and it still looks great. I also ran the built-in benchmark with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, 1440p, Ultra with frame gen on. We got an average of 104 FPS. Always like to throw at least one fighting game in, so we've got Mortal Kombat 1 at 1440p, high with no DLSS. This game just works out really well on this RTX 4060, especially when it's paired up with this 8-core 16-thread Zen 4 APU. Spider-Man Remastered 1440p, very high, looking amazing here, and I should have probably unlocked that frame rate totally. It's actually up to 120, and once we get above the ground up in the buildings, it will jump up to 120. So yeah, we're getting some great performance with this. And the final game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077, where at 1440p Ultra with frame gen on. DLSS is set to auto here, and we're averaging around 83 FPS. In my opinion, this is pretty impressive, and I know some people are against frame gen, but I love it given that we need to get as much as we can out of these lower powered systems, and frame gen does help. So I completely understand that this isn't going to be for everybody, but this was something that I came up with and it does work really well. That's why I wanted to make a quick video. I've had a few people asking about this because like I mentioned and showed you, there are a lot of devices hitting the market that come with Oculing. And right now, trying to get a full-fledged Oculink dock in the U.S. is a bit hard to do, but you can always build one for pretty cheap. And you don't need to go with a low-profile RTX 4060 like this. You can go with something much larger if you want to. You just need to make sure that you're going to have enough power. So using an ATX power supply is probably the way to go for a lot of people out there. But if you want to make a small form factor unit, then this does work out really well. If you're interested in putting something like this together, I will leave some links in the description. You can actually pick up everything that you saw me use in this video over on Amazon. If you've got any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.